Hello, ARRL members and QST readers worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I write the Ask Dave column in each QST. Accompanying each Ask Dave article is a video that takes one of the topics and expands upon it. And that's what we're going to do here. Uh, this is the supplement to the December issue, December 23 issue of QST. And it talks in general about ways to increase your signal. Now, in there, I mention that I didn't know of any commercial manufacturers of quad antennas. And I immediately got several responses saying, well, how about this? How about that? Well, I checked out all of them, and there were two that led me to two manufacturers who still do them. This is the article as it reads in the December QST. Uh, there was a question on the cubicle quad versus the hex beam, and Frank Sullivan just wanted to know which was a better radiator. As it turned out, the cubicle quad was. And I made this statement, I don't know of any commercially available cubicle quad antennas. And that is what generated the responses. Let's briefly review what a cubicle quad is. This is not drawn to perspective, but rather to uh, what's called an isometric uh, drawing. Um, there are loops for different bands, loops for different bands, loops for different bands, and you can stick funny things in there to do stuff to it. But uh, in any way, this provides a series of loops kind of stacked up almost as though it's a Yagi made of loops. This is the model I used to answer the question in the Ask Dave column. Uh, there are two cubicle quads for 20 meters spaced eight feet apart, which is uh, what the question was about. Now there are two producers of cubicle quads that are active today. One is a company called Cubex Antennas. This is an example of one of their larger quads. This is a multi-band antenna, 20, 17, 15, um, 12, and 10 meters. And it's four elements. Now, it's a massive affair, as you can see. It has to be held up by a tower, strongly guide, and the uh, way the antenna is built, almost as though it's a spider web, can cause tremendous problems uh, keeping the thing from being bent or blown apart. Uh, one of the nice things about Cubex is that they've really addressed this problem. It used to be that people made the cross poles for their homebrew uh, uh, cubicle quads from bamboo poles, and of course they all broke in the wind, giving the antenna a bad reputation. Cubex makes them with the uh, stronger pieces. The other manufacturer of them, and as far as I can tell from their website, they only make this one cubicle quad, which is a two element quad on multiple bands held up by this spacer right there. Now they do make some vertical loops that you can rotate, but this is the only multi element one, but it is for active sale. So the end result of this is there really are vendors who make cubicle quads. Uh, some contacts for these are available there if you want them. I would note on the cubexquads.com, if it pops up with something that looks like um, a thing that's going to check whether you're human, that shouldn't be there. Uh, try Cubex quads again. Uh, if it still persists, uh, shut down your web browser and go back and try it again. Um, you don't want to go down the rabbit hole. I did, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm doing this from experience. That shouldn't be there, and the Cubex is working with their web hosting vendor to make that go away. The other one, big signal in Spain, uh, the .es is España and is the maker. They have many other products 
in addition to quads, whereas Cubex pretty much makes quads. The people who wrote to me were absolutely correct. There are some uh, few number of uh, quad manufacturers. Now, I would note that there are, there's a reason people go strongly in the direction of Yagis instead of quads. Quads are large, unwieldy, hard to handle. Uh, you're going to need a sturdy tower. You're going to need a uh, lift platform to get the thing into place and so on. Uh, there's a heavy-duty rotator involved. I mean, it's a big deal. However, they do provide excellent signal reports. So this is something that you can look at or look forward to if you want to. However, most people do Yagis. Uh, it's a lot easier to ship Yagis. Uh, they still require the same thing. They require a lift to put on. They need heavy-duty masts and rotors and all of that sort of thing. When you go to a gain antenna, a serious gain antenna, uh, you're making a serious investment in what you're doing. Uh, putting up a tower, putting up an antenna on top of it costs literally a few tens of thousands of dollars. So it's easier just to put up something like a hex beam and call it good and enjoy what you've got. So there you have it. And until we next meet, 73.